Huawei's ongoing difficulties with the US government have blown up into a major international news story, with Google pulling the Chinese company's Android OS license, with huge implications for the future of Huawei's phone business. Before we actually get to what this means for you and your Huawei phone, a very brief history of the run-ins between America and the company. The US government accuses Huawei of being in cahoots with the Chinese Communist Party and thus posing a national security risk, a claim Huawei denies. This is all ramped up under Donald Trump's presidency, but US concerns about Huawei and ZTE, which is also claimed to have ties to the Chinese state, date back at least to the Obama years. Last year, the US Congress successfully pressured AT&T and Verizon to ditch plans to launch the Mate 10 phone, scuppering Huawei's plans to launch in the US. Following this, US government employees were forbidden from using phones from either Huawei or ZTE. Then, late last year, the CFO of Huawei was detained at the behest of the US while transiting through Canada. The US claimed she was involved in supplying US tech to Iran in violation of US sanctions. In recent months, the US has also pressured allies in Europe against using Huawei's tech in their developing 5G networks. Which brings us to last week, when Huawei was added to the US's entity list, which restricts its ability to export American technology. Again, for the aforementioned national security reasons citing alleged ties to the Chinese government. Individuals or companies on the list need a permit from the US to export American goods, including hardware and software. In terms of national security, the US seems mainly more concerned about Huawei's network equipment. Nevertheless, Huawei's blacklisting also has a major impact on its consumer business. Intel and Qualcomm's processors, and more importantly, Google's Android OS, count as American exports, and so, as of now, Huawei needs a permit to use that stuff. And because it doesn't have one yet, companies like Google have started pulling the plug in order to comply with the law. Hence the big news that most recently Google has suspended its dealings with Huawei and revoked its Android license. That's a huge deal with potentially fatal consequences for Huawei's phone business outside of China. Important to note though, this isn't Google choosing to screw Huawei, it needs to revoke its license to comply with US law. According to Reuters, who first broke the story, Huawei will immediately lose access to updates to Google's Android operating system. Future versions of Huawei smartphones that run on Android will also lose access to popular services, including the Google Play Store and Gmail and YouTube apps. That means future Huawei phones would likely be left with the Google free version of Android used on its phones in mainland China an enormous disadvantage given the dominance of Google services in the West. Huawei would no longer get access to future versions of Android ahead of release, nor advanced access to Android security patches, both of which it enjoys now. For any Android updates at all, it'd need to wait until the code hits the Android open source project, the open barebones version of Android without the additional Google bits. It also presents problems for firmware updates to existing devices. Huawei devices sold in the West have their software certified by Google in order for Google Pay and DRM and other sensitive apps to work properly. This is part of something called SafetyNet, and it's basically Google's stamp of approval that the firmware is trustworthy and legit. If Huawei can't work with Google, in theory it can't get certification for major updates to current Android devices. We're not just talking about the upcoming Android Q here, but any changes to sensitive parts of the firmware. The choice would be to leave all its devices on their current firmware, which would be bad, or break safety net by shipping future Android security patches without Google certification, or perhaps Huawei could leave most of the firmware as it is and try and tiptoe around any of the changes that might break safety net. Even then, some things would be impossible to change while keeping that certification. Obviously, all of those are very bad options. But when it comes time for a new Huawei phone to launch, the options would be even more unpalatable. Either skip a Western launch entirely, or ship it with some variation of the Google free Android it currently uses in China. Needless to say, an Android phone without Google is going to be a very, very hard sell in places like Europe. Skip ahead a year though, and things get even worse still. Huawei would be at a disadvantage compared to its Android competitors, since it wouldn't enjoy the early access to Android R that'll be afforded to the likes of Samsung, LG, and others. It would be virtually impossible for Huawei to keep pace with the competition. The US government knows this, of course, which is why the most likely outcome isn't any of what I've just said, but instead Huawei either being taken off the entity list or given a permit by the US to work with Google, Microsoft, Intel, and other key partners. Given the timings of this latest news and the ongoing US-China trade war, it's quite likely the future of Huawei's consumer business is being used as leverage here. If the US wants to effectively kill Huawei's phone business outside of China, all it needs to do is not provide it with that permit to do business with Google. Personally though, I think a compromise as part of an eventual trade deal is much more likely. Look at what happened with ZTE in 2018. That company was caught with its pants down not once but twice, was blacklisted by the US but eventually removed after negotiations allowing it to continue doing business. 
I also don't think it's likely we'll see any other Chinese companies like Oppo or OnePlus targeted in this way, as some people on Twitter have speculated. Remember, Huawei's phone business is just collateral damage here. The real target is the company's 5G infrastructure ambitions. Still, what happens next is very unclear. This statement from the Android team today is interesting in that it doesn't mention security patches specifically, but rather malware protection provided through Google Play services to all devices, regardless of the OS level or the security patch level. Huawei's own statement promises to continue providing security updates for current devices, but it doesn't say what form those will take, nor how it'll solve the technical and legal dilemmas we've talked about today. How this plays out will be decided in the weeks ahead. Is there a quick resolution between Huawei and the US, perhaps with significant strings attached? Or does this thing drag out for months? The key time frame to watch out for will be around the fall, as Huawei prepares to launch its new Mate phones. So bottom line, if you have a Huawei phone or are thinking of getting one, first, I couldn't blame you if you waited to see how all this plays out before parting with your cash given all the uncertainty involved. That said, Huawei is promising security updates for current devices, it's just not clear when nor what form that'll take. Obviously for Android OS updates beyond P and Q, all bets are off. However, I do think a relatively speedy resolution to this as part of a deal with the US government is the more likely outcome, as opposed to Huawei being a second-class Android citizen in the long term. Still, this is a developing story, so keep it locked to AndroidCentral.com for more analysis, and subscribe here on YouTube for all our future coverage. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.